out here at uh, <clears throat> Larry Griffey's Hot Rod and Restoration Shop, and uh, I've got a really cool project that he's working on, and it's not your normal hot rod. It's uh, it's actually a four-wheel drive, but it's got all the elements of a hot rod are working on it. It's going to have uh, the best of the best and a lot of things designed into it, and uh, I'm going to try to get Larry to tell us a little bit about it. Larry, how are you, brother? Doing good, Scotty. How are you doing? Oh, outstanding. Tell me a little bit about this thing. What is it to begin with? Well, actually, it is a Phantom Type. Started out as a Toyota FJ. Okay. And um, the FJs were never built as a quad cab four door. Uh, they were a short wheel based vehicle. But there's a company down in British Columbia that started building this uh, Phantom Type body, which is actually a quad cab body, so it encompasses the forward overs here. Gives you a longer wheelbase, and they actually do the, the frame rails or a uh, mandrel bent frame rail that they are producing for it that is actually off of the pickup truck FJ, and we're using it under this, but uh, we ordered one of their aluminum. The, the bodies for FJs were always steel, so there's a lot of problem with rust and deterioration in all the bodies, especially from the Midwest East. Uh, so this has become something that that's, uh, gives you an opportunity to have a brand new all aluminum body. And so we started with that, and then of course we used a, a regular steel FJ hood, and uh, found a good one and out west actually bought it out in uh, Colorado and had it shipped in here. But we have started setting this up. It's using a 350 Chevrolet Ramport fuel injected motor for the power source. And we've set it all up. Uh, it'll have air conditioning, um, power steering, power brakes, uh, all the comforts. Uh, we're designing into this where you can run down the highway 70 miles an hour with your air on at a comfortable ride. And then when you get to your off-road locations, such as Royal Blue or one of the locations, then you can go off-road with it by airing the tires down. And we've also incorporated into this system a hydraulic system uh, that one of the fellows at works here in the shop. Kevin designed and engineered a system here for us to work on this that will actually, let me raise it up and set that seat forward and get this where you can see it. A pretty neat system um, that actually encompasses everything you need in order to make it go four inches higher off-road. And that's, that's real valuable because it gives you the height, the articulation and the suspension and all that that you need in order to do that. So it's going to handle good when you're driving at highway speeds because it's going to be four inches lower than when you're yes. off-roading. This is right height right here. When you when you go off-road with it, we have designed and built a cantilever system here. This has a uh, full hydraulic system on it. And what the hydraulics does is moves the pivot point of the shock mount. It pivots the shock down, which in in essence raises it four inches so you'll hit two buttons one for the front one for the rear right. and the truck will come up four more inches which will give you tons of wheel space right plus um, we went with Dynatrack high pinion 60 front and rear axles under it so bulletproof axles we went with an Atlas 5.0 transfer case all billet aluminum transfer case um, we've used DOM tubing built all the long arms here in the shop brackets all the suspension and everything, we have got all dummied up for it and got everything tack welded in place, skid plates. And we're also going to put an additional skid plate under the front that will cover the transmission and, and the bottom of the oil pan. So um, it's we've encompassed into the design of it the Fox off-road racing shocks with the uh, remote fill nitrogen units on it. So it has good ride, but yet it has plenty of articulation. Right. For going off road, and you said the rail and the right side rail is frames and air tank. Yes, the right side. When you get where you're going, you can air your tires down to five or six pounds, or whatever that that you need right. in order to feel comfortable on the off road. And then when you get ready to come back out of the woods and you get out to the road, uh, this right, if you'll look right here, we've encompassed a compressor on board. Right. And that compressor, the the right frame rail, everywhere that we have welded into it or put bolts, anything bolted into it's done in a uh, a bung. So it wells in and that frame rail is airtight. How cool so, is that? So uh, we'll put a hose back here and, and, and 
for all practical purposes, that's a two inch by four inch by a 16 foot long air tank. Right. And then when you get ready to air it back, you know, get ready to come out of the woods, you flip your switches, your chassis comes back down, you get your air hose out and air your tires back up and you're ready to go back out on the highway and go. Then you're on your way. How cool and, is uh, that? Like I say, it's all aluminum, so it helps with the weight. Uh, we're working on the top design now and trying to figure out exactly how we're going to do the top and what we want to look, but it's got, uh, it's got 17 inch, uh, uh, 1250 35s on it with 17 inch billet wheels. Um, it's got AGR power steering box on it with, uh, air, with the cooler for the power steering. Um, It'll have a stereo system in it. Uh, it's got air conditioning box we've got incorporated in it, so it'll have air going down the road. Heat. It's tilt wheel. Heat, tilt wheel. Um, put the big worn winch on it. We've built all the winch plate. Uh, all of this has been fabricated in shop here, the front bumpers. We're getting ready to do a rear bumper that will have a similar shape to this. This will be capped, and then there will be a bar that comes and ties in here, and there will be a similar bar on the rear that holds a spare tire. Okay. So we'll have a spare tire on it. Um, it's just going to be a neat way to have both your cake and eat it, too, right, so right. to speak. It, it'll be very, very uh, dependable off-road. We've encompassed the front the sway bar on it. Um, so it'll help stabilize it. Um, yeah, it's the real deal. It's the best of both worlds. Because like you said, you're going to put a nice interior in it. Yep. Decent paint job on it, nice paint job on it. It's going to line X the underneath of it. The underneath of the floors, under the fenders, and everything's going to be done in a bed liner material. And then we're also going to encompass that on the inside, all over the floors, in order to improve the sound deadening quieten it down inside, and then we'll come back and do carpets in it that are snap-in on type carpets. When, right. you, when you get ready to go off-road, you can snap your carpets out, go to wherever you're going to go off-road. If you get it dirty, you get it muddy, you can come back out. We'll have drains in the floor. Right. And then you can pressure wash all the inside out, pressure wash the truck underneath, do everything, let everything drain out, dry out, clean it all back up, snap your carpets back in it, and you're good to go to the grocery store if you want to go in it. Cool. Y'all going to put a snorkel on it so you can drive it underwater? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've actually put watertight fittings and everything and put all the connections for the fuse block mounted up high in the event right. that it gets... Yes, uh, we've tried to incorporate that uh, in the usage of it so that if we do get it up in water, you know, right. we, we keep that to a minimum as far as damage that'll, that will happen from it. Sure. Radio and everything mounted up high in it, all the electronics, computer, right. the fuel injection, all that's mounted up high underneath the dash. So try to keep you know everything to where we don't have an issue with uh, water. Wow. Well, obviously I'm excited to, to get it done, but the thought just crossed my mind. Once it is finished, we'll have to do some kind of testing on it, won't we? Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. you just can't say it's no. it's roadworthy, it's four-wheel. Look at no, it. It's got no, all the stuff. No, we'll... we'll, we'll uh, We'll let you come back and do a deal when we first yeah, go off-road. Yeah, yeah, that's what we'll, we want we'll, to We'll see. let you come in and do a deal where we run 70 mile an hour down the interstate, and then we'll take it off-road. Right. No, but cool. Yeah, yeah. We'll get. Yeah we'll, yeah, we'll do it when it's done, but yeah, we'll do all the road tests on my channel, too. Yeah, very cool. We've done, uh, we also built, designed a fuel tank for it, and built an all-aluminum fuel tank here in the shop for it. Uh, it's got, uh, it's not only got horizontal baffles in it to keep the water, the fuel from sloshing sideways in it right. but also in the event that the truck's tilted up or tilted down we put the fuel pump in the tank and then put a canister around it but we've also put front to rear baffles in it so that in the event that the tank that the vehicles rolled forward or backward in a steep down a steep incline and it happened to be low on fuel right it still should pump if there's gas in that tank it should pump it right and that tank capacity on that tank right now is 25 gallons so okay we tried to put a good tank we're also going to put a skid plate under here just in the event, that's eighth inch, but we're going to put a we're going to put an eighth inch uh, steel skid plate underneath this in the event that we get rocks or something up against that to keep from damaging that fuel tank or rupturing it, of course. Right. And back here there will be a bumper. The tire will be mounted spare here to where it swings out of the way, and then of course this gate closes down like so, and then it has oh, internal that's cool, isn't it? storage area. Right? It has internal storage areas in wow. here. Y'all are on top. How long have you been working on this? Uh, this we got started on just a few months ago, really. Uh, we, we ordered the body and got it in, but we didn't get the uh, 
We didn't get the uh, Dynatrack axles in. That took a while to get those from Dynatrack. Uh, they had to be special belt ordered and everything for it, so it took a while to get those in. Cool. And we've widened, we made the flip forward seat in the back so that we could access this area in the vent. We did all this with an access and folding door here, so in the event that you have a problem, you do rupture a hydraulic line, you cut something, you bust a bearing, you do something on some of this, we can access it easily. To, from the top. From maintenance. Yeah, instead exactly. of getting to the bottom. Sure, no. Mm -hmm. Y'all are thinking of everything. Yeah, no, I know this is, you know, a very cool project, but, um, yeah, it seems like you have all the bases covered on it, too. So, because, you know, if you're going to make something like this, it's going to have to be darn near bulletproof to get anybody's attention. Yeah, and that's, and that's, and that's what we want with it. Uh, that's part of the, as we've looked at it, designed it from the get-go, was that it would be bulletproof and it would be usable in both venues. You run down the highway comfortably if you wanted to drive it, you know, to 300, 400 miles. Uh, right. We're putting, uh, we're also incorporating trailer hitch and everything into the back of it, receiver, uh, that way if you want to pull a trailer... Um, this has a 117 and a half inch wheelbase, and uh, we're used to Ramport 350, which is a 350 horse, 400 foot pound torque motor, and we coupled it up with a uh, uh, 65 transmission, so 4L65, and had it built and put heavier gears and everything in it, and all the pumps and everything in it, in order to try to make that transmission bulletproof. So. You know, if we wanted to pull a trailer with it, we wanted to do whatever with it, it should right. be capable of doing that without any problem. Have you all uh, spent any time to think of a target price that you're trying to hit for the vehicle when it's done? No, I don't know exactly what we're going to do. These will probably be custom. We're not going to try to mass produce it. Instead. Right. That's not our intent at this point. We, we kind of did this for a, uh, uh, a personal friend and customer uh, as in conjunction with us and our ideas and, and what he wanted and... Uh, so, you know, we do have another customer that is interested in one, and we may, we may build some of them, but they will all be more or less one-off. Individual you know, projects. If the person wants to use a big box Chevrolet, they right. want to use a Ford motor, or they want to use a diesel. We've right. even thought about that in the, encompassing it with a diesel. That's so a good idea. So, it's hard. Yeah, they, yeah, they're, you know. they're not inexpensive. They're high, they're no, expensive of course goals. they're going to be. Yeah. You know what? The total will finish out. Well, I'm gonna, Larry, if you sold these for twenty five grand a piece, nobody would buy them. Right. They've got to, they're going to have to be near $100,000 or better, or, or you're not going to be tapping into the right clientele. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure it will. But, I mean, that's, that's the thing about it is, is that, look, if what you were building is just another Jeep or another Toyota FJR, whatever you right. call the thing, why? Just go, I'll go to Jeep and buy one. You can't, exactly. you can't make it cheaper right. than Jeep it's, can. That's what we do with all our vehicles. Our, our street rods are all custom built, and, you know, you can, if you... If you're trying to mass produce a car and you're going to build 50 of them this year or 100 of them this year or 500 of them this year, then obviously you have to do them within certain restraints. You have to make them where you can use the same patterns for this, 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 sure. this. What we do for our customers is provide a service and we custom build it the way they want it. Right. We work with them. We try to... Uh, to uh, develop a, a, a rapport with our customer to where they can tell us what they want and we try our dead level best to incorporate what they want into their vehicle. And everybody wants something different. That's the whole name of this game. Right. No, that's what it's about, right? And that's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so um, it's like um, so many projects here. We've got several. This Fit 6 Chevrolet is, a, is an example of one that's just a, a you know, completely different animals. Doing yeah, we're going to do we're going to do a feature on it too. We'll get back to that one. But uh, let's just uh, take one more quick walk around this. And you see, again, I'm ignorant to this. It's a Toyota FFJ. FJ. FJ. FJ40. Okay. Is what and, and um, like I say, that's that's the front end and that's the design I got and the you. look of it. But they never built one that was a four door quad. I got you. So that's what it's based on. No, I understand. Well, that's very cool, and I can't wait to uh, follow this project through. And, of course, take a ride in it and see what it'll actually do. Larry, I appreciate your time Thank so you. much. Thank appreciate you, brother. It, Scotty. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Have a good day. You too. Folks, there you go. Um, are you not excited to see this one get finished, right? How cool is that going to be? You know me. I'm about street rides and, and low and fast kind of things. But um, it does have an intake in the hood. <laughs> so, you know, it looks fast. But I think it's going to be very cool. Um, I'm a fan of Larry's and his work, and I've seen some of the stuff he's worked on. And 
I've not found anything in the end I'd have been like, oh, I wouldn't drive that. So I don't think that this will be any different. I think it's going to be a super, super cool vehicle. And I uh, hope you all are looking forward to seeing the end of it. So thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you all stopping by. Have a good day.